takes money for these operations to uh, exist and to progress. So the Life Walk is a way of doing that, and you'll find information about it in your bulletin. There's a few upcoming events uh, as well. And uh, I was looking for a podium this morning, no podium. I'm flexible though, I thought I would use this, but obviously something different is up. And I'm not sure what that is, but we'll get to see in short time, won't we? All right, well that brings us to our mission moment. And I have a video here that uh, I wanted to share with you. Uh, we, get, we have a, a thank you video from missionaries that you've helped us support with the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. So let's look at that together. Hey, we're Joseph and Kristen Gibbons, and we grew up in Southern Baptist churches. It's where God called us to ministry. And we are now planting Favor City Church in Henderson, Nevada, which is in the greater Las Vegas Valley. And thank you for supporting us in our new church in the city as we're here to make Jesus known. And thank you for continuing to lead your church in giving to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. We could not do this without you. Hi, my name is Jefferson Hernandez. And I'm Carol Hernandez. We are an ordinary family in the hands of the extraordinary living God who has called us to make Jesus known. We want to thank you for your prayers and your gifts because it has helped us to reach the Hispanic community. Hi, we're the Glimp family from Jacksonville, Florida. We're church planting, missionaries here, doing all we can to make Jesus known. I just want to say thank you for giving so generously to the Annie Armstrong offering and your prayers that enable us to do the work that we're doing, the gospel work that's so needed. We just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's better than I could say it. Thank you from North American missionaries who will benefit from the offerings you've made over the past several weeks to the North American Mission Board. I. I haven't been to Las Vegas in a long time, but I think it's just fantastic that I can give a dollar and that dollar can go and help their effort in Las Vegas. I think that is so cool. Uh, and not only are we supporting Las Vegas, Jacksonville, Virginia, and places all over the North American continent. And I'll just say it, not as well as our missionaries did, but thank you for participating in the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Let's pray. Father, you are the missionary sender. You sent Jesus, ultimate missionary, to this earth uh, to die for us, to be raised to life, and for his life to fill us through your spirit. Lord, we thank you that there are missionaries all over this continent who are carrying that same message to people who haven't heard. And we pray, Lord, that you will continue to empower them, that you will give them the message that people need to hear, that you'll help them connect with people, that you'll raise up opportunities for the gospel uh, to be shared and heard. And we thank you so much for sharing that message, for sending your son, because we wouldn't be here without him. And may you bless and bring favor to these missionaries in Jesus' name, amen. Will you all please stand for the reading of the word? The mighty one God, the Lord speaks. He summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. From Zion, the perfection of beauty, God appears in radiance. Our God is coming, he will not be silent. Devouring fire precedes him, and a storm rages around him. On high, he summons heaven and earth in order to judge his people. Gather my, my faithful one to, to one of them, one to those who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens proclaim his righteousness for God as the judge. Amen. Thank you, Marshall. Please be seated. Well, how is everybody today? 
As we enter into our time of prayer this morning, I want to kind of take off of what we were talking about as far as the mission work that is being done in the North American Mission Board, the North American ministries that are taking off. And this morning we have a unique opportunity. Uh, we've got with us Ryan and Demi Hiley that are here to kind of discuss a sports camp thing that we're going to do this summer. But uh, my, pr- my our prayer focus this morning, I would like for it to be upon the ministry work that's being done all across this nation, all across this world. As we've come out of this Easter season, we saw God do some amazing things. We saw him... um you know, we've seen, I've heard story after story of people coming back, people coming to faith in Christ, all of these things taking place. That doesn't stop on the Easter season, right? It doesn't stop just because Easter Sunday is gone, we still celebrate the resurrection. And so let our prayer focus this morning be for all of the mission work that is going to take place, specifically for uh, Ryan and Demony, uh, Demony, sorry, I promise I'll get it right, Ryan and Demony, Demony this morning and their work with Destiny Sports Missions, as well as with we're doing through here. Let's pray for those that are, that are reaching this nation uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So will you join me as we go to the Lord in prayer? Father, we thank you for your love for us. And God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the life that we have in him. Father, we're so grateful for what you're doing, not only in our community, but Lord, what you're doing across this nation. Father, we're grateful for missionaries that are going forth in order to spread the truth of the gospel, in order to bring new churches and reach new people. Father, in order to uh, communicate the desperate need of Christ to people who desperately need to hear it. So, Father, we're grateful for that. Lord, I thank you for Ryan. I thank you for Demony and, and, and their mission. And, and, Father, I pray your blessing upon them. I pray that your blessing upon the, the, the ministry that they, the niche that they have. Father, I pray that you continue to allow it to go forth to proclaim the truth of the gospel. And, Lord, that many kids come to faith in Christ because of this. Father, we pray for what we're doing here. We pray for all of the the work that is going forth. Lord, we know that the harvest is mighty. The harvest is plenty. But Father, we need workers. So Lord, we ask you to send workers to the harvest. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together and to worship you. We thank you for the opportunity to hear your voice. So, Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for that opportunity. Lord, we know that, Father, you are worthy of praise. And so this morning, Father, as we lift you up, as we praise your name, Father, we pray that you will let our hearts be set upon you, that, Lord, that you will speak to our lives, that, Father, that you will do what we cannot do, and you will speak to our hearts, and you will encourage us. And that, Father, that as a result, we'll leave here different. We'll leave here changed. We love you, Father. We praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning again, church. If you'll stand with me as we begin our worship. We, uh, we celebrate and we worship today because Jesus is still risen. 
he rose last week, but it doesn't, uh, our celebration doesn't end there. Our excitement of the good news of Jesus doesn't end uh, when we leave the building on Easter Sunday, but rather, uh, if we've been redeemed by Christ, we should never cease uh, to be joyful in worship of him. Uh, so as we sing about this good news of the gospel of Christ, uh, let us proclaim that we are ready to tell the good news to everyone. One, two, three, four. Christ was born in a distant land. Tell the good news, tell the good news. Live on earth for the good of man. Tell the good news, tell the good news. Tell the good news, tell the good news. Tell the good news that Christ has come. Tell the good news. songs are a great song with lyrics that remind us that the one who created us and redeemed us and uh, continually sustains us is the one who's worthy of unending songs of passionate praise. Uh, so feel free to sing along as you catch on to the melody. Uh, the beginning of this chorus goes like this. Morning and evening, everything breathing must sing. Rise up and praise the King of kings and sing. I want to invite you to sing it with us this time. Morning and evening, everything breathing must sing. Oh, sing. All of creation, rise up and One, two, three, four, five, six. Rise up. 
just uh we're so grateful for all that you've done for us of uh, of your love for us of the fact that you came and you uh, you died and rose again so that we could be forgiven from our sin lord we're thankful for that victory that you've won lord and so uh, it's our pleasure it's our privilege and it's our honor to be able to sing of our redeemer to sing praises to the king of kings Lord, as we uh, continue on in this service, as we continue in our worship of you, Lord, we ask that you would, uh, that you would make us aware uh, and help us to understand your word as well as what you're doing uh, in this church. Lord, help us to have that mission focus to go and to tell the good news to everyone. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, kids, if you will come on down. Come on down. Hi. Hello. Hey. All right. Oh, you all right, Kevin? You safe? Yeah. We got, the, we got the call on the field. He was safe, so he slid in. Hey, buddy. Hey, Kevin. Come on. All right. How is everybody today? Oh, Kevin, you okay, buddy? Did you get yourself? Okay. You okay, bud? All right. All right. Everybody have a good week? Yeah? Yeah? Everybody excited about... You know, being back in school after your four-day week, and yeah, now you get a long one this week. No, you're not excited. That's okay. I wasn't either whenever I was your age. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So, what did you bring me? A compass. A compass. Oh, I don't know if I can do anything with this. First of all, I don't know how to open it. Okay. She's going to open it for me. All right. The bug is ringing. What was that? The bug is going ring, ring. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. This, it, what is a compass? Do you know what a compass is? All right, let's see. What, what do you think, Sayla? Okay, it tells you which way you're going. That's almost there. Okay. What, what is a compass? It's, or it could tell you the time. Okay, um... Yeah, uh, I guess maybe if you if you knew the the direction you were going, you could set up a sundial and get the get the right time and and go from there. Yeah, you can do that. What 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 else? What else is a compass? What's a compass for? Okay, okay. Oh, are you okay, buddy? Yeah. We're having a rough morning this morning, <laughs> but that's okay. You want to come sit right here? And sit right here by me? Yeah. All right. There you go. That's okay. We're having a rough morning. So the arrow points to the north, right? And so why is it important to know the north? Why is that important? So you know where you go. So you know where you're going, right? Because if you know where north is and you know where south is and you know where east is and you know where west is and you know the direction you're sort of heading, you can figure out which way you're going, right? Um, I know this isn't quite as fancy as a GPS device, right? But 
uh, this is what this is for, is so that you can know. So, so from here, I know that my house is south from here. And so if I know which way north is, then I know which way south is, right? I know which way east is, and I know which way west is, because you never eat salty watermelon, right? That's the northeast, southwest, sorry, that one went right over their heads, that's okay. Um, anyway, so you know, you know which way it goes, Right? Right? So I can get home if I know the direction that I need to walk. Right? And this is really important if you've never been somewhere before. I've got a question for you. In our spiritual life, in the way that we live our lives, what is our compass? What is our compass? God. God? Okay, that's good. Anybody? What is our compass? Jesus? Jesus? What's our compass? All, all good answers, right? I'm not saying that any of these are bad. They're all good answers. What's our compass? The Bible, right? God gave us his word so that we would know what to do, so that we would know which way to go, so that we would know what's right and what's wrong. And so when we don't know which direction to go, when we don't know what to do, we can turn to God's word and we can see the important thing. We can see what's right. We can see what's good. We can see what God desires for us to do. As long as we know which way true north is, as long as we know which way God's word points us to go, then what the choices that we make, as long as they are, in, as long as they are along that path, those choices that we make, we won't go wrong. As long as we know which way to go. Okay? Did you know that? Did you know that? Yeah, I know. You knew that? Of course you knew that. You know everything, right? All right. Well, let's do that this week. Can y'all do that for me this week? This week, can y'all look in God's Word and, ori and, and make sure that you know which ways the way of God and follow that. Make choices based upon that. Can you do that? Yeah, you can do that. He is. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your love for us. And God, we thank you for these kids. Lord, we thank you for who they are. We thank you for their hearts. Lord, we thank you uh, that, Lord, that you love them. And so, Father, my prayer is that we show them that you love them. And that, God, we show them that Jesus loves them. And that ultimately, in all things, God, we show them you. And so, Lord, help them to, if they don't know you, Father, help them to come to know you real soon. And Lord, help us to orient our lives. Help us to focus our life upon the true north of your word. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. That was awesome. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right, let's see here. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no? Okay. All right, all right. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Sarah. Come on. Let's go. Thank y'all so much. Okay, well, do you want it next week? Okay, all right, good deal, good deal. All right, Ron, you want to come on up here? Dr. Nussie was right. We are doing a little bit of different thing today. Have a I'm seat. Raise my camp's insurance for that one young one. Yeah, that's here. that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good. That's right. That's right. We are uh, we're just kind of doing something a little bit unique. Um, I had a seminary professor that told me that if you are boring your people, you're sinning because the word of God is not boring and God's life is not boring and the things that God has. Um, the way that he allows us to work and to minister is not boring. It's a unique thing. It's not just something that we come and we listen to a message and then all of a sudden we, we get it, we have to live it, we have to experience it. And so we're going to do things just a, a little bit different this morning. I'm going to interview Ryan. Uh, I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about himself. But the first thing I need to preface this with, and this is required, so you need to make sure that if you don't hear anything else this morning to hear this, uh, I've known Ryan for a really long time, and he likes to tell tales, okay? So anything he says about me uh, may or may not be accurate, 
Uh, just uh, we'll just we'll just leave it at that. But you might take a special offering for stories. There, there you go. A special offering for stories. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Now, Ryan, Ryan is the founder of Destiny Sports Mission. Uh, they go. They do a number of different things. But I'm gonna let him tell you a little bit more about that. But Ryan, will you introduce yourself a little bit? Give us about your three-minute testimony and any other pertinent information. Sure. Well, thanks, Chad. Thanks for having me here too, man. Um, enjoyed already this morning with my wife. This is my wife, Dimini, down here. She's the brains of the operation. <laughs> um, together, we have three kids. So we have twin boys that are 16. Uh, Rhett and Deacon are their names, and we have little Addie Mae, who is not little, she's 13, but uh, she's still my little Addie yeah. Mae. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, oh um, yeah. So, that's who we are, we live in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, so, Chad and I met in Lubbock, actually, at Trinity Christian Schools. That's right. Uh, I grew up, actually, in Odessa um, until I was 12, and then God was gracious enough to move us to Lubbock. Yeah, because he got to meet me. Out of what we call <laughs> slow death. Up. Yeah, um, there you go. There you go. But uh, no, I grew up the son of a coach, so uh, it, sports really kind of was all I knew. My dad was a dad was a coach, uh, co- was a head baseball coach for as long as I could, as long as I'd been alive. Um, and so sports was what we did. Like our vacations were around sports. Um, I just didn't know anything else. I broke my arm for the first time because I was wearing baseball cleats to school, you know, and fell. Um, I just didn't know any better, right? Um, but when I was growing up, and I love the, the kids' corner um, and, and just some of the focus here because, you know, one thing about the gospel and about Jesus is he says, let the kids come unto me, yeah. you know, and, and there's something about when Jesus tells us to have childlike faith. Um, that we don't get, you know, and uh, and I know a lot of us probably came to faith when we were a kid. I came to faith when I was a child, um, but until you have kids, maybe sometimes you don't really don't really get it until you watch your kids take that journey and and jump into the arms of Jesus. And so um, I've been very blessed to be able to watch all three of my kids make that decision Amen. Um, and it was incredible but actually when I was still a kid at 14 years old I was sitting in a Wednesday night youth service um, actually it was actually at my house we just had a pool party and we were um, singing without any instruments which you know us Baptists um, that usually is not too great right <laughs> if we uh, sing without too many instruments and this wasn't uh, it didn't sound too great, but uh, for some reason, as we were praying, God decided to lay on my heart this idea. And that night, I actually drew it out in a notebook, um, the name and everything that night at 14 years old. Um, God called me to do sports ministry. Um, at 14, I had no clue what that looked like. So in my brain, as a baseball player, Chad and I played baseball together. Yeah. Um, I was like, man, you know what? God's going to make me into a professional athlete. And why are you laughing? We played baseball together. That that's why I'm That chuckling. wasn't the joke. Um, <laughs> and I was like, God's going to make me into a professional athlete. And then everyone's going to know who I am. And I'm going to give them, of course, all the honor and glory. Um, but then afterwards, I'm going to start these camps. And people are going to come because who wouldn't want to come learn from me? Right? <laughs> Um, that's not how things went. Uh, three elbow surgeries later, my college career was only two years. Uh, and um, I didn't really know what that was going to look like and what that meant. Uh, but God had a plan, and it was bigger. Yeah. And uh, so in 2005, it was a big year. We got married. I graduated with a Bible degree from Lubbock Christian University. Um, and I got a call from a place called Nikinski, Alaska. Uh, it was a youth minister. Somebody said, mm, like they've been there, probably fishing. Uh, but I got a call from uh, a minister in Nikinski, Nikinski, Alaska that I had known growing up. And he said, I need you to come do a baseball camp. And he knew because of growing up that that was my heart and my desire. But I had no, no clue what that looked like. I was like, baseball in Alaska makes 
perfect sense. <laughs> so away we went to Alaska that summer, uh, the summer of 2006. So he called in 2005, summer of 2006, away to Nikinski, Alaska. We went and God changed everything. Yeah. Um, we partnered with a church there where in the community, the suicide rate was higher than the high school graduation rate. Hmm. It was one of the darkest places Mm. I have ever been, even though, even though it was light um, for like 20 hours out of the day, uh, mm. the darkness was heavy. Amen. Um, and we did mm. a week-long baseball camp for 40-something kids in this little village, and um, we partnered with the church to do it, and we were able to plug those kids into a discipling church, and we saw kids get saved. That's awesome. Um, and so that changed everything, and Destiny was really... The course of destiny shifted from there, and uh, and away we went. Awesome, awesome. So, yeah. yeah. So explain a little bit more about that course of destiny and yeah. what what all that looks like today in 2024. So through that trip, um, we decided that destiny really needed to be a ministry that could be a springboard for churches. Um, I know we've talked about missions throughout today, and we are missionaries. I mean, we raise our own support and go all over the place and do camps and, and work with people. Um, in fact, Destiny works with, with well over a thousand people every year wow. um, presenting the gospel. But the one thing that's the biggest thing about missions is that the Great Commission is for everyone. Yeah. Um, just not everybody knows quite how to reach. Yeah. And so Destiny is a tool. We, we come in with trailers full of sports equipment. Uh, we train our volunteers and we help run a sports camp with volunteers from churches um, so that they can reach their communities. Um, and so that's the biggest drive of Destiny. We do other things. We do international mission trips, uh, local mission trips. <clears throat> we have sports teams that play out of Lubbock. Um, basically using sports as a vehicle for the gospel uh, is, is our mission. But our biggest drive is partnering with churches of all sizes uh, to use sports as an outreach event and get the gospel out. Why sports ministry? So I tell people all the time, um, number one, I don't know anything else. Um, <laughs> it's probably the truth of it. Yeah. But uh, there's two universal languages in this world, love and love of sports. Like everywhere we go, people know how to speak the language of sports. Um, and so we use sports to draw people into the church that maybe are a little hesitant. You know, um, these families that send their kids to our camps, maybe they wouldn't really come to a church on a Sunday. Maybe they feel guilty. Maybe they have church hurt. You know, I was ministering um, with a guy just this last week, and he just had a lot of church hurt mm. um, in the past. And so he was so hesitant to go and be a member of a church. But we all know, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here because you're here, um, but we all know how crucial the local church is Amen. for discipleship and for growth. Um, it's just so hard to walk with the Lord outside of the local church. And so um, sports is, is just a universal language to get people in the door um, is, is the short and skinny of it. In fact, uh, years ago, we were in Houston doing a camp, and this little kid with a mullet comes running up, and we just got through doing the devotional, and he's coming back outside to go to his sport, and I, I just happened to be walking by while he's walking by, and he's telling his buddy, he goes, I had no idea we were going to do all this Jesus stuff, right, as he was walking back to his sport, and I was like, that's exactly why we do it, Yeah. Um, because that young man's family you know, he, they, they had no involvement with the local church. Um, and yet we get to introduce the life-changing message of Jesus Christ through the common love of sports. Hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Have you seen sports ministry work in churches? Uh, yeah, I sure hope so. I mean, we've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Um, that would be bad, right? Just riding a sinking ship, but uh, no, we, we definitely have seen it work. In fact, um, since 2010, we have seen over 70% of our church, uh, or excuse me, of our camp participants come from outside of the church. Wow. 
And so seven out of 10 kids that come to our camp year in and year out are unchurched. And so we have seen a massive influx. Last year, we had 800 kids in camp and we saw 150 of them give their life to Jesus Christ. Wow. And so we've seen um, just about a thousand, since 2010, a thousand kids come to know Jesus. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. I'd say that works. It works. Yeah. It works. And there's nothing fancy about it. You know, it turns out, I know everybody was probably on their phone looking up my professional statistics, but um, <laughs> we don't have a single kid come to camp because they know who I am or because it's like, oh, he's, he's some brilliant sports guy. Um, God, God brings the people where, where they need to be. Um, and, it, and it does work just because the sports is just to get them here. Yeah. But the gospel always works. Amen. Right? The truth always works. Um, scripture tells us that the word of God does not return void. Yeah. You know? And sometimes we're not real patient with it. Right? And sometimes we, uh, we're, we're like, man, God, why is this? This doesn't seem right. But the fact of the matter is that the more that you spend time in the word of God and the more that you proclaim the truth, it always works. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good word. That's a good word. We um, just to kind of give you a little bit of of background. We probably in October, I guess, was that when the associational meeting was? I think it was in October. We had a missionary come uh, speak to our association. We hosted it here at, at the at the church, and and he came and he kind of started talking to us about reaching outside of the four walls of the church. Um, his point was they were there was a church from London that was going to South Africa in order to reach people with the gospel. Well, the population of London was 1% Christian. The population of South Africa was 40% Christian. And he says that's kind of backwards. And a lot of times what we see in our, in our churches is that we don't see this propensity for reaching out to the people in our community. We, we like missions. We like to talk about missions. We like to see all of these sorts of things as long as it's happening somewhere else. This is mission right here. Yeah. And this works right here. Yeah, so um, I've always believed, and I heard a great quote years ago, and you know, I'm going to tell a secret on Chad. Oh, All crud. great pastors, uh, they hear stuff, and then they begin to eventually think that they came up with it, right? <laughs> so um, you're going to hear him say some great things, and the reality is he took it from somebody else. But, um, I do the same thing. So I heard this amazing, like, uh, message at one of the churches that we actually do camps at consistently down in the Houston area. And he said, I don't want us to be a cruise ship. I want us to be an aircraft carrier. There you go. And uh, I love that imagery because it's like, man, we come here and then we get sent out because we're all missionaries. Like you all have areas in your life that I can't reach. Um, and, and I have areas of influence in my life that you can't reach. So our goal is to come together and to spur each other on with the gospel of Jesus, yeah. right? Um, and with the truth. And so it's exactly what we're supposed to do. But And going is great. I mean, like I said, we, we do mission trips elsewhere. Uh, but my email tagline is share the gospel wherever you go and start next door. There you go. Right? Um, if we're not sharing the gospel right where we're at, then we might have a construed view of the power of the truth, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, it's life-changing. Yeah. And why would we not want to do that right here at Great Creek? Amen. Amen. That's a good word. You know, I think sometimes we think, oh, well, my neighbors either know it, they've either heard it, or I'm not the one to tell them. Somebody else needs to come in and tell them whenever it really is. It's just us opening our mouths and opening our hearts. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we all, like I said, we all have our journeys with Christ, right? And uh, very few people accept Christ the first, first time they're told. Yeah. Um, so we, uh, the, the truth of the gospel never loses its strength, even when we're saved. Yeah. Like I still love to hear the gospel every time I hear it. Yeah. And uh, there's always power and I'm always convicted every time I hear the gospel, and uh, and so we should be free to share it, no matter if they know it or not. That's not our job, yeah. right? It's not our job to know and to decipher. Well, they're are, they're a Christian. They're yeah. not, you know, whatever. Yeah. They're they're real bad. They're, there's no hope there, right? <laughs> um, but our job is just to share the truth because we all need it, whether we're saved or not. There's power in the gospel. 
Amen. Amen. I'm grateful you had that approach uh, quite some many years ago. I've told this story a lot. It's part of my testimony. Is uh, For those of you that have heard my testimony and heard me broken down on the side of the road, this is the man, this is the brother right here that shared Christ with me. And as a result, I came to faith and thought I knew the gospel. I thought I knew it. And somebody could have easily looked at my life and said, no, he goes to a Christian school. He, his parents are Christians. They're good people. They could have, he could have easily looked at my life and said, oh, he's, just, he, he's a believer. I don't need to share the gospel with him. But he didn't. So thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Thankful for uh, lots of broken down buses on those That's uh, right. high school retreats. That's right. We, we had plenty of time. It seems like I had time on the side of the road every trip that we took. <laughs> <in the bus. laughs> That's what happens. Yeah. But yeah, it is. It's, it, like I said, it's truth. And I, I don't know. Something, I mean, when I got saved as a kid, it just seemed like, why would I not want to tell people? Yeah. I, I, I just, Jesus changed everything. And I, I grew up too, yeah. like uh, my parents in the church and love, love the Lord. But it's like, man, this story is real. And this story is powerful. Yeah. And why would I not want to share it? It's yeah. I, and I love to tell stories. You know that. But um, it's the greatest story on earth. So why yeah. would I not share it? Amen. Amen. So what are we talking about doing? What are we talking about teaming up with y'all with, about? Sure. Yeah. So um, what we do is all summer long, I'll be pulling a trailer uh, full of sports equipment. We'll set up at local churches, um, do registration, and, uh, and host sports camps with all sorts of different sports. It just depends on the church and what we can handle uh, with, is what sports we run. And um, it's all an effort to, to share the gospel. So our theme this year is winning it all. Uh, and it comes from the story of uh, actually from this last week, from the Passion Week. When, Amen. Uh, Jesus is anointed um, before he goes into the garden and uh, the alabaster jar is broken and poured over him and mm. she just gave it all. Um, and, and so we will have a skit that, uh, Chad and I will do. No, just kidding. Uh, we'll have, we'll have, um, a lesson, uh, on that. Um, but it, it's with a volleyball team and it's a girl that wins it all. She's like the Caitlin Clark of volleyball, right? And, um, she wins all these rings, but then she lays them all down at the feet of Jesus. And nobody understands it. Nobody gets it. Wow. Uh, but she does because she just can't help but give everything to the, to the feet of the Lord. So that'll be our theme this summer. It's called Winning It All. And we'll show up and we'll do a three-day sports camp here. Um, but I need your help. Uh, we're going to need you to volunteer. We need you to work because you are the hands and feet of Jesus. If, if these kids come and have a great time... And my face is the only one uh, that they remember. Number one, they'll be scared. Yeah, yeah that's true. Right? That's true. Uh, but number two, it really doesn't benefit them because they don't need they don't need a gospel that's a once a year gospel. Amen. Right? They need a church family uh, that they're going to see out in the public that they're going to know. Hey, they love Jesus and they love me. They spent a week with me. Right? They spent three days with me, um, loving on me, and and promoting sports and doing all that stuff. It's, it's, it has little to do with, that, with the sports, to be honest with you. Uh, the sports is the hook, uh, but it has all to do with you guys. And so uh, we're going to need you to spread the word, uh, to get people registered. We're going to need you to volunteer and, uh, and come out and, and spend some time uh, with these kids and give them really good snacks. If, if anything is half what I smelt walking in, um, Oh, you're about some really happy kids. Yeah, you're about to eat. Yeah, we, they, have some really we know how to cook here. Yeah, that's really happy kids. part of the reason why I look um, like I do. So that's kind of that's kind of what we do. We'll come, we'll do a camp here, uh, and present the gospel. We'll meet with those kids that uh, decide that they want to know more about Jesus. We'll meet with them individually as as a church family, uh, present the gospel, and hopefully invite their families to come experience what church really is uh the family of the family of god so yeah. Uh, so yeah that's that's what we'll be doing here and we're really excited it'll be at the end of july last week so of july chad picked uh, probably the coolest time of year yep so that we could do that um he talked about eating well. I think he probably wanted a weight loss program that's for a, you and I. That's exactly so, right. Yeah. Um, and we're going to wear sauna suits out there and what yeah. we're going to be doing um, but, uh, yeah, so we'll be starting the week of July 29th and do a three-day camp and, uh, 
I, I couldn't be more excited yeah. about doing it. And when is the gospel shared? So day two, so the story will build. Yep. Um, the story will build as it goes through the three days. But day two uh, will be when we, after the story, present the gospel message and, and have kids so that we have day three to really follow up uh, and make sure if there's any questions, uh, you know, talk to them about baptism. Yeah. Um, and, and hopefully you guys can get introduced and meet the family, send some information home, things like that. So day two of, of camp will be when the gospel presentation really Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And so once once they leave and they're done, we, we, we're not done with the kids. We're not done with the families. Part of this is, is trying to bring them in and have a discipleship time to where we can meet with the families and, and minister to them and also continue to pour into the lives of the children. And, you know, this is all done with a, with a discipleship, with a gospel focus. Um, it's not, well, like Ryan's mentioned it a couple of times today, it's not about the sports. It's not about getting these kids to be professional athletes so that we can say, look at what we've done. It's about reaching them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here's the fact of the matter. If you were to drive by the Texas Bank Sports Complex this morning, it would be packed. Right? Uh, the soccer fields around the area, they are packed on Sunday mornings. Where people are is where we need to go with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is one of the ways that we can do that. Uh, it's one of the ways that we can bear down or break down these walls and to reach a community that desperately needs to hear of the love of, of Jesus. Uh, we see the news. We see the things that are happening around this world. Sorry, I'm getting past you just a minute. Like but we see the things that are happen, happening around this world, and we know that we have the answer. We know that we have the hope. We know that we have the solution for the problems in this world. We've just got to figure out a way in order to convey that to those that need to hear it. And this is a great way to do that. Um, I've noticed this community loves sports. Uh, we've, we've got t-ballers. We've got a baseballer. We've got all this stuff. And the enthusiasm for ch ch child sports is huge. And this is a way that we can tap into that. Um, and so we're, I'm excited about it. My heart is jumping for joy and, and ready to go. And I wish it was the end of July already right now so we could be doing that. But uh, I sort of don't because it's too hot. But uh, anyway. I'm not quite ready yet. So yeah. Don't, don't yeah. Okay. Okay. I've got like six camps to do before this. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. We won't speed it up that yeah. quick. We won't speed it up that quick. So uh, you've mentioned a little bit about what you need from us. Um, what else do you need from us other than volunteering? Man, I, I, honestly, I think the biggest thing is prayer. Um, yeah. Like I said, we are a self-funded ministry, so we charge for camp what camp costs. Um, so everything else, um, the tires on the car to the gas in it, to our staff, um, we raise all of that through the giving of individuals uh, that want to that want to partner in the gospel. So. Um, we are launching some new fundraising campaigns called Full Count, okay. um, and we need your prayer. Like, I covet your prayers right now um, as we do that, because I, th my approach to fundraising the whole time has been, like, I don't, go, I don't go out and try to guilt people or give them the sob story um, of what we need, um, because I really genuinely believe that God funds the ministry. Man. And I need to be a great steward of that, um, but God funds what he wants to, wants to do, and God's all about the gospel, and he's always been faithful for us funding this thing. And so um, I need people going to the Father um, and asking him for favor. Amen. Amen. So I covet your prayers um, in, in that specific area uh, for sure, because... That's kind of as that's kind of this season as we're preparing for camps. It's like yeah. okay, let's uh, let's draw some into the storehouse so that we can pay for pay for a summer on the road. Right, right. Yeah. And that's Destiny Sports Mission. What's your what's your website? Yep. DestinySportsMission.com. DestinySportsMission.com. If yep. the Lord puts on your heart to to give to to that or or even just to to find out what's going on so that you can pray better for them, uh, however God is is putting that on your heart, you'd be please. Check that out and lift Ryan up to you. Yeah. Follow us on social media. Learn what we're, you know, we try to update the best we can on there, what we're doing and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, that's cool. And really, really pray for Demony because she has to put up with, with yeah, Ryan. No and 
uh, yeah. all that. But no, um, I'm excited to what you're doing. I, I love it. I see the passion behind it, and I know the passion behind it. And I think this is part of one of the good things you get to see in ministry is you get to see people that love the Lord. And you get to see their heart for the Lord. And so I'm excited about what, what Ryan and them are doing. Uh, I want to close with, with a scripture, if, if we can. Um, the one that popped into my mind as we were talking about this is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses uh, 19 through 23. Um, don't worry. I know we just got out of 1 Corinthians a while ago. We're not going back to it, okay? So... Uh, but 1 Corinthians 9, verses 19 through 23, For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being under the law myself, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside of the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside of the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I might share with them in its blessings. That's what we're trying to do, is to become all things to all people, to reach people that might not ever walk through a church building, uh, but they are going to be able to hear the gospel presented. They are going to be able to hear the gospel not only explained but also discipled and have that opportunity for discipleship to come along. They're going to see the gospel modeled and these sorts of things. And that's, that's the purpose of this. And so I think for us, our, our prayer focus needs to shift that the Lord will begin to bring those into the, the, this camp, into this ministry that we're able to partner with and as a result see lots of lives transformed. 150 kids last year. That's fantastic. My question is, we all know families. We all know people that aren't, that aren't following Christ. Uh, we see them around. We, we see their sports. We see them post on social media uh, and some of the things that are posted. Let's, let's open our mouths and let's invite, let's pray, let's say, come on, come enjoy this, this week of camp. They're going to learn. He's, he's kind of hard on himself a little bit. They're going to learn how to, some, some skills, right? They are going to learn skills. Sure, yeah. But they're also going to learn the greatest life lesson that's ever been told. And that's the lesson of, of Christ. And that's the, the message of the gospel. So, Amen. Amen. Anything else? Uh, you know, we'll start registration probably the end of next week. Uh, we'll get some door hangers or yard signs, whatever Chad decides will work best around here uh, in your hands with the QR code for people to sign up. Um, invite your friends. Like this is, uh, this is an amazing week and it, will, it can be an amazing church week because we're all together um, in a little bit different setting. Uh, you get to listen to me instead of Chad. Um, <laughs> They didn't but, laugh that much. That's good. You're doing a good job. <laughs> Your wife, I think, was the only one that laughed. That was yeah, impressive. I yeah. mean, she gets tired of hearing me. So. Um, <laughs> no, but it, it will be an incredible week as a church body, and there's a place for everybody. Uh, you don't have to love sports to volunteer this week. Uh, you just have to love the kids or love telling the good news. Yeah. Um, and so uh, we, we're excited to have you guys here. Well, like I said, we'll start that registration. You'll have your own registration site that, uh, that people can go on and register. And then we'll get some material in your hands to get out and start canvassing the neighborhood for, uh, for kids that can come. So Yeah, that's awesome. So it's not only just the, the drills. It's not that type of thing. We will need people to help with that, that sort of thing. But it's primarily just listening and talking to kids and, and sharing the message of the gospel with them and serving food and... Um, giving band-aids out and that sort of thing of, I mean, not that anybody's going to get hurt or nothing. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're not going to let you do sports stuff. I'm not, oh, come on. We know yeah. how yeah. fragile you are with those things. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. He's not wrong. Ryan gives me grief. Uh, he gave me grief today saying that I broke his collarbone, which isn't true. Um, it but fault. it was my okay. fault. Yeah. yeah. I had to leave and he had to catch and what was the length of that? One pitch. Yeah. One pitch. One pitch broke the collarbone. Yeah. One pitch broke the collarbone. So, <laughs> wasn't a long 
career. <laughs> yeah, but. that's okay. That's okay. No, but we're excited about this, and and I'm really excited, Ryan, with what the Lord's doing through y'all. Um, yeah, it's really a, an interesting, exciting thing, and and I think that the child the child's uh, sports industry is something like a seven to eight billion dollar industry in this country, and it's the the desire is there. But if we meet the desire and couple it with the gospel, there's no telling what the Lord can do through this. Revival is what it's called. That's, that's, I've heard that term yeah. before. Yeah. Yeah. And that, it's real. I mean, that's exactly what would happen. Um, if, if, we can, as we, if we in the church can reach that world with the life-changing news, then revival will occur. There's no, there's no other way to say it. Amen. Amen. Well, let us pray for that end. Absolutely. Let us pray for that end. Father, thank you so much for your love for us. And God, we thank you for Destiny Sports Ministry. We thank you for the life-changing message of the gospel that they are presenting to these students. Father, we pray that you continue to bless their ministry, that you continue to anoint them with the, the ability to convey the gospel in a way that these kids understand it, that they accept it, that, Father, that they are... Um, having their lives changed. Lord, we're praising you for the amount of, of kids that came to faith last year and Lord, anticipating so many more this year. And so Father, as we prepare, as Lord, we pray that you begin to prepare the hearts of those that this will appeal to. Uh, that Father, that you begin to prepare the hearts of those that are uh, desired to have a sports background and desire to play sports. And that Father, that you'll sh let them see a that you'll let them see this event as a way to not only improve their skills, but Lord, to also change their life. Father, we're about life change. We know you're about life change. We know you're a God who desires that none shall perish, but that all shall come to repentance. And so, Lord, we, we do this in that light. We trust you in this light. And so, Father, we pray that you will begin to prepare the hearts. Lord, prepare ours as we prepare. Father, prepare the hearts of, of the volunteers that are, that are going to volunteer. They just don't know it yet. Father, begin to prepare that heart. And Lord, begin to bring them into the passion for kids, the passion for seeing the gospel proclaimed. Father, the passion for discipleship and, and, and seeing a, a community transformed. Because Lord, that's exactly what the gospel does. Father, we've seen it all throughout history. We've seen whenever the gospel reaches places, the transformation of the community. And so, Father, we are tr calling out to you. We're calling out to you to, to do that here in Grape Creek, to do that here in this area. The, Father, that the gospel goes forth and that people come to faith and that, Lord, the community transforms. Father, we trust you that you can do that. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty, holy, and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you. Yeah. Well, y'all are staying for lunch, right? Yeah, how could okay. we not after we walked through that? Yeah, I asked her to put a couple extra pounds of meat on there. Uh, but yeah, no. what, I don't know yeah. that we were planning on it, but then I smelt it. There you go. Can there we talk you go. about how big print that Bible is? By yes, the yes, it's wonderful, right? Holy smokes, dude. You know, the reason why I do that is so that whenever I'm walking around... See, this is unusual for me. I don't know that I've sat in one place in the middle of a sermon. Normally, I'm back and forth like this. Yeah. So yeah. I've been catching myself. <laughs> yeah, see? They're clapping. Especially the camera guy back there. He's, he's clapping, making yeah. sure that I'm not doing that. Normally, we're going back and forth. And uh, so I get to be able to, you know, I have to be able to find my place very good. So well, yeah, and that and I'm getting old, but an don't say that. It's in one place because it's about 40 pounds worth of Bible. It is. It is. So. That and I'm getting old, but we don't, we don't say that. No, we don't so. talk about that. We don't talk about age. So, all right. All right. Well, praise team, are y'all going to come and close us out? And we are excited about that. Thanks, Ryan, for being here. Uh, he's going to be in there. We can talk to him and, and all of this stuff. And, yep. and uh, once again, no stories. Okay. No all right. All right. <laughs> Amen. Let's stand together. We're going to sing that song, uh, Sing, again. We're going to sing that together uh, as the ladies are finishing up, getting ready for uh, us to come join them for the food. Uh, let's sing this together. We've got to start at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six.
returns in majesty. We will bow in wonder before the Lamb, and evermore the saints will sing, and evermore the saints will sing. Morning and evening, everything breathing must sing, oh sing, all of creation rise up and pray.